the crates on the wharf were built on a large frame, sturdy and thick. I didn't much like being jammed into a crate and loaded onto the ship, but I could think of worse fates. Like being jammed into a crate full of rats and loaded onto the ship. What's your name then, little fellow? The hold was dark and dank, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. I pulled the label out of the wreckage. It had writing on it that I couldn't understand. The bilge water was littered with flotsam that looked like the remains of a smashed crate. It looked lived in. The question was, by what? There was nothing of value in the debris. A bunk bed, like any other. I searched one of the bunks, but found nothing useful, and nothing I wanted to think too closely about. There were some strange scratches on the bedpost, which looked as if they'd been caused by either a wild animal or a man with very bad dental hygiene. What they meant was anyone's guess. I wasn't about to tear the bedpost off the bed. I searched a bunk and found a small scrap of cardboard. It could have been anything. There was a number on the back. Either a six or a nine. It was hard to say. I'd managed to remain hidden on the ship, but I knew my luck couldn't last forever because I'd stopped being lucky around age 12. The first mate looked less than happy. But I don't think he saw who I was as I dived in elegantly on the ankh. Fortunately, the crust of the ankh was soft that night, and I escaped both injury and discovery, although I needed two baths just to feel dirty. You could say this about Nobby. Deep down, he was a good man. Well, deep down, he was probably a man. Good might be stretching it a bit. Hello again, Nobby. Hello, Luton. Did I disturb you? No, no. What made you think that? Well, there appears to be smoke coming from your ear. Oh, oh that, um... Well, I, I, I've been working hard, you see. Working so hard that your ears have caught fire. Uh, Don't worry about it, Nobby. It's not like I'm going to report to you. I have been working, see? Oh, sure. I never doubted it for a second. How's work treating you, then? Not so bad, Luton. I've been busy, though. Rushed off my feet. Yeah, I can tell. Can you read this? Give me a break, Luton. I don't know everything. Does this mean anything to you? No.
Do you know a dwarf by the name of Al Kali? Never heard of him. How did you know he was male then? You can't trick me. Everyone knows dwarves don't use the female pronoun. Okay, okay. Mind you, I've always wondered what a female pronoun was. One of nature's wonderful mysteries, Nobby. Is it normally kept covered or what? I'm going to leave it to your rather uninventive imagination, Nobby. Has there been a dwarf around asking questions? I don't know. I don't suppose you've investigated the passengers on the Milka, have you? Of course I have. Sorry, but you're not the most, er, uh, diligent of investigators. I work as hard as any man of my rank. You're the only man of your rank. There's three dwarfs, two troll, a woman and a zombie with the same rank as you, but you're the only human male. I know you're human because you carry a bit of paper to prove it, signed by the midwife. The maleness, I'll take that on trust. Do you want me to help you or not? What have you got? Well, I interviewed one of the passengers. What did you learn? Uh, that's official watch business. You didn't learn anything, did you? Not as such, no. Any chance I could interview this passenger? I don't see why not. She's down in the Cafe Ankh now. Well, that's something, I guess. What do you know about a woman named Carlotta? Never heard of him. Have you learnt anything about the Milka? Yeah, not as such, no. You go to great lengths to conceal how little work you do, don't you? Hey. Do you know anything about a man named Mundy? Never heard of him. Catch you later, Nobby. The troll stepped out of the shadows like light was too intimidated to illuminate him. He seemed like the quiet sort, but you got the feeling that if you stepped out of line, you'd get your teeth kicked down your throat. For that matter, he could kick your throat down your chest and your chest through your legs. But I was hoping it wouldn't come to that, because none of my clothes would fit. Find them. Sorry, friend, I don't understand. Find Therma. You want me to find Therma? Is that it? Well, what is it? A person? A thing? Look, if we're going to carry out a conversation, it'd help for you to talk. Find Therma. Okay, okay, find Therma. What's your name, friend? There was something about a troll that big that made you want to call him friend. Malachite. Find Therma. You've got to find her. I wasn't about to argue with a troll that could twist my head off and use it as a cocktail onion. Okay, friend. What can you tell me about her? Any suggestions of where I should start looking? Used to sing at the Octarine Ballad. Find Therma. Got to find Therma. How can I contact you? Find Therma. That was all he said. I guess he wasn't very bright. But then there's things under damp logs that are brighter than most trolls. <laughs>
call If the whiskey knocked you flat Or if everything was a blur I thought I told you never to... Ilsa, I thought I would never see her again. I prayed that I'd never see her again. But either the gods didn't listen, or they were having a laugh at my expense. Knowing the gods of the disc world, I had a pretty good idea which. Play it again, Sam. You know what? No one's ever going to believe you said that. Hello, Ilsa. How long's it been? Too long. That's funny. I was thinking that it wasn't long enough. Aren't you pleased to see me? Sure. Like a jellyfish praying for the tide to come in. What's that supposed to mean? If I always knew what I meant, I'd be a genius. Back then, you always knew what to say. I still know what to say. I just choose not to. You're getting a big kick out of making me feel cheap, aren't you? Well, maybe I had it coming. Hey, don't take my side. You'll take all the fun out of it. I spent years rehearsing what I'd say if I saw you again. What I'd ask you. I tried to imagine what you'd say. But now I'm here. You can't think of anything to say? Now you're here, and I just want to slap you. Just once. Across the cheek. What will that prove? That I still haven't forgiven you. You're not making this easy, Luton. Did you think I would? Did you think I'd just come bouncing up to you like a trained puppy? Maybe I'd wag my tail and wait for you to throw me a stick. Well, I'm never going to be another woman's dog for as long as I live. That's cruel. Not as cruel as the day you left me. What made you ask for that song? I was feeling sentimental. Uh, it's good to know that you still remember me. How could I forget? I don't know. But you managed to leave. I figured you'd probably manage to forget as well. Never. I tried to forget you. I tried to forget the day you left. I tried to forget the good times. I tried to drown your memory in cheap whiskey. And did you forget? I don't remember. I still remember you. That's what the song means to me. It's everything that's good about our time together. You got lucky, Elsa. You got all the good memories, and I got all the bad. It didn't have to be like that. It's always like that. I suppose you have some explanation for what you did. Some pat excuse that'll make everything all right. There's no excuse for what I did. At least we agree on one thing. Why do you hate me so much? Because I had everything when I had you. And when you left, you took everything with you. It's easy to hate someone who took it all away from you. It hurts to hear you talk like this. Good. Do you know a troll by the name of Malachite? I've not met them. Sorry. Tell me one thing, Ilsa. Are you involved in these murders? What? The murders. They started when you arrived in town. I can't believe that you would think such a thing. That's terrible. I mean, I know I've done some bad things, but I've never killed anyone in all my life. Just checking. What do you know about a dwarf named Al Kali? I've not met them. Sorry. Has there been a dwarf around asking questions? I'm sorry, Luton. I don't know anything about that. So, you came in on the Milka, did you? Yes. Alone? No, I came with a companion. Uh, it figures. What? Women like you are never alone. I've been alone. You know nothing about loneliness. You know nothing about what it's like to not know why you've been abandoned. You don't know what it's like to watch your career slip away because the one thing you care about has been taken from you. You don't know what it's like to spend years going into restaurants and asking for a table for one. You don't eat in restaurants. Okay, but if I did, that's what I'd ask for. Why did you ask about the Milka? You came aboard in Ecclepan, right? With a man. Yes, his name's Two Conkers. How did you know? 
It's my job to know. You're being paid to find out where people board ships? No, I'm a private investigator. <laughs> Have you met a man named Mundy? Yes, there was a man named Mundy on the ship we came in on. He kept himself to himself, mostly. What can you tell me about him? He seemed nervous. Anything else? I remember him going down to the cargo hold at one point. He looked really shifty, as if he was hiding something. Is that it? That's all I can think of. Ilsa had told me she was tr for now. Can you read this? Yes, it says Pier 5. What language? Agatean. How do you know an obscure language like that? Actually, two conkers is from the counterweight continent. I learnt it from him. I thought that people weren't allowed to leave the Agatean Empire. Oh, things have freed up these days. I'd be careful who you tell about two conkers, Ilsa. Why? People can be funny about foreigners. And there's always been rumors about the Empire. They say they use powerful magic there. The last time one of them arrived here, the city got burned down. Two Conkers isn't going to burn the city down. You know that. And I know that. But the average man on the street doesn't know that. They see the unknown as a threat. Why? Two Conkers is harmless. No one's that stupid. Let me let you in on a little-known secret. You know how stupid the average person is? I think so, yes. Well, statistically, half of them are even dumber than that. I take it you're the watchman for this warehouse. Wow. You're sharp. People never work that out. I mean, there are so many reasons that I might want to be out here on a pier in the middle of nowhere. But you went straight to the fact that I'm a watchman. Well done. That's a real talent you've got there. It usually takes me much longer to take a dislike for someone. I've got a few more. That's... Have you seen any labels like this before? Oh, sure. Where? On crates. I have this inescapable feeling that I could try and get some useful information out of you about this, but that it wouldn't be worth the time and effort I'd have to spend on the way. I'd go with that feeling if I were you. I'd heard of the Octarine Parrot. It made other dives sound appealing. What a place. I could feel the rats in the walls. Hell, I could see the rats in the walls. In fact, some of them had come out of the walls and were sitting at the tables. Can I help you? You could sell me a drink. What's your poison? I'd prefer whiskey, straight, with a whiskey chase. You didn't come here to drink, did you? Well, I didn't come here for the sparkling conversation. Most of the customers go squeak, squeak. This seems like a nice place. No, it doesn't. It seems like what it is. A wretched hive of scum and villainy.
It's tough to get to the top in that field. You could have that on a sign outside. Come to the Octarin Palace, the most wretched hive of scum and villainy this side of the Ark. Are you being funny? Apparently not. You look a little nervous. I can't shake the feeling that sooner or later someone is going to get their arm cut off. Have you always owned the parrot? No. It used to be a troll bar. I took over the place after the riots. Did you keep any of the staff? Sure. I kept anyone who wanted to stay and wasn't too badly injured by the riots. But there's something about a group of rioting trolls that makes people reluctant to walk back into a place. Or indeed, unable. Did you keep any singers on the staff? Only Sapphire. It's not often I see a half-elf bartender. Be honest. It's not often you see a half-elf. Okay, you got me. What's the deal? I don't like to talk about it. I thought elves were supposed to be irrepressibly likable, so that they can get away with whatever acts of cruelty they want. Like cats. Well, I'm not an elf, all right? That's the problem, isn't it? Everyone can see that you've got elf blood in you, but you've got none of the advantages. All you get is people's prejudice. I don't like your mana. I'm not selling it. Tell me about Sapphire. Why don't you just talk to her yourself? Just don't bother her while she's working, all right? Do you know of a troll who goes by the name of Malachite? Tall, terse, and dense, in both senses of the word. Might have been one of the customers from when this used to be a troll bar, but I wouldn't know him if he was. Do you know someone named Therma? She used to sing here. That'd be before my time. Sapphire might know. She knew all the troll singers from back before I took over the parrot. The troll singer was something else. I didn't know what, but she was something. Can we talk? Certainly look that way. Move mouth, waggle tongue. Yeah, it all working. My name's Luton. Sapphire. I could already tell that Sapphire was a troll who could look after herself. I knew I'd have to watch my step around her. It was quite a long way around her too, and not the pretty way. You've been a singer here long. Long enough. Long enough for what? Long enough to want to be singing somewhere else. Tell me about yourself. I'd tell you about myself in four words. Big ideas, small results. Why did you become a singer? Aren't many jobs for a troll like me. And at least this one honest. Is honesty important to you? As much as anything else. I'm guessing nothing much matters to you right now, Sapphire. You catch on quick, Luton. What do you know about the barman? Mankin? Not much. Know that him a bigger loser than me. How come? He owns this place. At least Sapphire leave if Sapphire wants to. Why don't you leave? Where would I go? No place on disc for a troll like me. Spend our whole lives waiting for break. Just one chance to come our way that can seize in both hands tightly. But it never come. Or if it do, we don't recognize it. So we go back to grind of job we hate. And just keep on ticking each day, one step closer to end. Do you do children's parties? What do you know about a dwarf named Al Kali? Sapphire know a lot of people, but don't know everyone, mister. Have you heard of a troll singer named Therma? She used to work here. Huh, a troll singer named Therma. What's so funny? Huh, nothing. Sure, Sapphire know her. Know where I could find her? Try Morg. She dead. Her house on Tallow Street collapsed while back now. We trolls may be tough, but we're not indestructible. Rumors say she was practicing her moves and knocked out load-bearing beam. Brought whole place down on top of her. That's why 
Sapphire never practiced. That's the only reason? That, and I don't wanna. Know where she's buried? Sapphire don't know, but think they buried her under stage name Madame Lodestone. Madame Lodestone? Sure, on account of how attractive she was. <laughs> So Therma performed here under the name Madame Lodestone. Who are you, the narrator? I told you that already. I don't suppose you'd know a big troll called Malachite? Sure, he troll a few words, cause he don't know that many. Do you know where I could find him? Sapphire not seen him in years. But you try Rodan's workshop. He used to hang out there. Oh, oh. 